All right, in this video, I'm gonna be repairing the non-functional USB port in this mid or late 2011 15 inch Apple MacBook Pro. Uh, so for, the, for those of you who saw my previous video on this machine, uh, this is the one that I uh, repaired the logic board on. Uh, but as I showed you in that video, it still uh, wasn't completely functional. So if I go ahead and plug in this uh, mouse to the uh, lower USB port there, you can see it's the one closest to the SD card slot. If I go ahead and plug that in, you can see that there is no light on this mouse. And uh, of course it does nothing uh, to the mouse on the system. So if I plug it into the functional port, which is the upper one, as you can see, if I go ahead and plug it in there, see the light comes on and the mouse functions as normal. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to get up the uh, schematic for this board and uh, go through the process of figuring out uh, what's actually wrong with that port and uh, see what we can do to fix it. So I'm going to go ahead and shut the machine down here. And uh, from there we can go ahead and uh, get out the schematic and start looking around with a multimeter. So uh, I will Pause the video here and resume it once uh, I get everything set up. Alright, so as you can see here, I've got the schematic and board view open on my uh, Retina MacBook Pro. So the first thing we're going to do is zoom in on the board view to the port that we're trying to fix. So, like I mentioned, uh, it's the lower port here. So you can kind of see how the port's like outlined in the board view here. So we'll just zoom in to the port that is not working. Uh, we'll click on one of the pins and that will tell us the component of the part uh, it's on. So you can see here that that USB connector is part number or part J4600. So then all we need to do is search for that in the schematic. So I'll go ahead and search for it up here. J4600. And you can see there is the USB port right there and that's represented uh, right here on the schematic. So now what we've got to do is figure out what all the pins are. You, so you can see uh, that pin 1 here, which is the uh, power pin, is uh, should have a voltage of 5 volts. You can see it's specified right there. So the first thing we're going to check is that pin on the board and make sure it is actually getting 5 volts. So we can go ahead over to the board view here and go ahead and flip it around to the back of the board like this. Scroll over here. And let's zoom back into that port here. And then we can figure out which of the pins on that port is pin 1. See, so uh, that's not the right connector. Ah, so here's that USB port. So that is, as you can see, we're on J4600 again. And pin 1 is the uppermost pin. So that would be um, that pin right. Let's see if I get my tweezers out. It would be the pin right there. So that pin with the little square pad there. So what we're going to do now is just go ahead and turn the machine on. And now we can just do that with the battery. Alright, so the machine's on. So let me turn my multimeter on. And uh, we'll go ahead and test that point and make sure we're getting 5 volts. Alright, so I've got the camera and a tripod here so you can kind of see the multimeter. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, measure the voltage on that pin and in theory it should be about 5 volts. So let me put that on that pin. Alright and we are getting 5 volts. I can turn that down a little bit so you can see. So yeah we are getting exactly 5 volts on that pin and I'll test the other USB port and we're also getting 5 volts on that pin. So obviously the power delivery to that or to the uh, USB port is not the issue here. So now we should focus our attention to the data pins, which are the two middle ones. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug the battery here so the system turns off. And uh, let's go ahead head back over to the schematic and uh, see where the data pins connect to. All right, so you can see the data pins right here, pins two and three. So it looks like uh, they go along here to this part, uh, L4600, which looks to be a couple coils. Uh, this is probably one, yeah, it is one uh, little uh, 
part of the board. It just has two two coils inside it, I guess. Uh, so we'll go ahead and look for L4600 in this in the uh, board view here. So the way you do that is just click component up here, type L4600, press OK, and uh, here's the part right here. So let's go ahead and zoom in and figure out where it is on the board. So you can see that this is the port that's bagged right here, J4600. So all we got to do is look for L4600 on the board. So we'll head back over to the board here. Um, let me get my tweezers. So we'll find the port, which is right here. And we will look for J or what is it? L4600 uh, from there. So it looks like. Oh, there it is. That's it. It is completely missing from the board. So that's exactly why uh, that port is not working at all. Because that part has the coil for both data pins. And without it, they are not connected to the rest of the system. So uh, you can see here that the port's here, the part's here. And it's the same thing on the schematic. So now what we need to do is find a place to get that part from. And here we've got that uh, mid-2012 dead board that I showed you in the previous video that I took the other parts from. So what we're going to go ahead and do here is uh, look for L4600 on this board uh, using the board view file for it. So we'll go back over to here. I'll go ahead and open the board view for that board, which is the... Let's see what board this is. I think this is the... Okay, so as you can see there, this board is the 820-3115 board. Um, so we'll go back over here, open up that schematic. The board view here. And we're going to want to look for the L4600 part. Okay, and as you can see, it's located right here on this board. So we'll go over to the board here. So that's the lower USB port. So here's the lower USB port. And there's the part right there. As you can see, it's just right next to it. So if I go ahead and put this in the light here, zoom in a little bit, there's the part we need right, right there. That little part right here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is get my hot air station set up and we're going to go ahead and attempt to remove that component and solder it onto the other board. So uh, I will be right back. All right, so before I start with the hot air, I'm just going to go ahead and start by cleaning up the uh, the pads here for that, that, uh, that component. So I'm going to go ahead and add some flux to it real fast. Just a little bit is all you need. And then I'm just going to take some solder with my soldering iron and just smooth it out so it's much easier to solder uh, a new component onto it because this is a very, very small surface mount component and uh, it'll definitely make it a lot easier. So I'm just going to put a little bit of solder on the end and then I'm just going to just rub it around on there just to get them nice and clean. Of course, make sure they're not bridging. Wipe the iron off here. And that should be about good. So uh, for now, I'm just going to go ahead and pause the video here, get my uh, hot air station set up, and we'll continue with the repair. So I'll be right back. All right, so I've gotten my uh, hot air station ready here. And I uh, apologize if this is going to be a little bit hard to see, but uh, the component we're trying to move is uh, this component right here, or remove, I should say. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is I'll go ahead and start heating up my hot air gun. 
So let's turn that on. See, I've got it right here. Right, so you want it pretty hot, but not too hot, so it'll burn and melt everything. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and put a little bit of flux on it, of course. Alright, that should be about good. So then what we're going to do is go ahead and take the hot air gun and heat up the component for a little bit and then eventually it should just come right off. All right, and that was pretty easy. It came right off. So let me get it off the tweezers here. All right, so we got the component right here. It's looking pretty good. So now we're just gonna go ahead and get the other board that we need to put the component on. And, and uh, then we'll just solder it right on. So here it is. Flip it around. All right, and the pads for it are right here. So I'll make sure you can see that. It's right there. Can turn the heat down a little bit. It's a little warm. All right. So now we can go ahead and take the component. Place it on the board in the proper position. This isn't exactly the easiest thing to do. Yep, and I think that did it. So let me check it one more time here. Yep, and that is definitely in. So let's go ahead and take a look at it here. So uh, there it is. Looks like it's in pretty well. So yeah, let me go ahead and get some of this flux cleaned up, uh, and we will go ahead and put the uh, board back in the machine, and uh, give it a quick test. So uh, I'll be right back. All right, so the machine fires up. So let's wait till it go ahead, goes ahead and boots up here. Alright, you can see it has booted. I'm not going to go ahead and log in yet. Uh, so let's just go ahead and test out that lower USB port. And it seems to be sort of working now, but uh, it doesn't appear to be working properly. So let me go ahead and take it out, plug it into the second port, make sure that still works. And it does. Let's try the other port again. Yeah, so what I think is happening here is one of the pins uh, wasn't isn't properly connected. So I'll have to take it back out, uh, re-solder it, and uh, then it should work just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and uh, I'll resume the video. All right, so as you can see, the machine is now booted back up again. Um, what ended up happening was apparently that component I put on the board was directional, and I had soldered it on in the wrong direction. So I went ahead and just uh, unsoldered it. Flipped it around, soldered it back in, and check it out. We've got the light on the mouse. It is plugged in the lower USB port closest to the SD card slot. And as you can see, it is working perfectly. Focus that in. You can see that the external mouse is working. 
it is moving the uh, cursor around on the screen. And uh, go ahead and plug it in the top port as well. You can see that that port is also working just fine. So that has been the repair of the USB port on this late 2011 15-inch Apple MacBook Pro. Hope you enjoyed this video.